Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm showing you this Arduino Mega Sensor Shield. Now, the reason that I wanted to use this Sensor Shield is for the Algae CO2 project. If you guys are following along with that project, you'd know that I'm using a lot of different sensors. Now, those sensors would typically connect into the Mega Board because I have so many of them. Instead of having all these wires connecting direct into the board, what we're going to have here is the shield which plugs in direct into the Arduino Mega. So it works very similar in the way that the breakout boards did in previous video that I've created, where instead of actually having all the slots or the pins where you can solder and create whatever type of setup you want, it's actually set up so it's just for sensors. So just quickly, you can pick these shields up on eBay quite cheap there. They're only, you know, $5 Australian there, free shipping. Um, there's multiple different ones you can get. And this is just the shield that I felt was going to suit this project best. So you might find that there's uh, better options out there for yourself. There is different models, so check those out. Now, those pins line up exactly the same on the boards themselves so all you need to do is just line them up over the right spot and then you can just push them together now it is tight because there's so many pins to get it in so just make sure that you don't push too hard without making sure that they've all lined up but once they do it's easy you just clip it down push it until it's nice and tight and there you have it now the bonus by using this shield instead of just using the Arduino itself is you actually have a rail for each of the sensors. Now as you can see there where those pins are, you have three of them. So you've got the ground, the voltage, and then the signal itself. So that ground and voltage pin will connect up to a external power source. And then the signal, as you can see, they're all labeled zero all the way up to 40 something and then they run off into each of the pins connecting into the arduino so one connects to one two to two all the way up to 53 or whatever it is uh, and then we also have an analog in so you can connect those there we've got an sd card bluetooth and also and the icsp on the side now there's also a reset button as well so instead of being able to reach underneath where that reset button is it's actually uh, easy to get to now as for the connectors i've bought myself a pack of all these different sizes and what i'm going to do is get a uh, two by four i believe it is and also a one by four now i could join those together with a bit of glue and then i'll have a whole pin connector for that whole one set as you can see there and then all i need to do is run the wires off to the sensors i need to and it'll be nice and easy to plug and play a whole bunch of sensors instead of having to wire them up on a separate board or something like that it's all easy and nice and fit you've also got uh, the sd card one as well uh, you can just plug in there if you need to which i don't think i'm going to use an sd card for this but um, we'll see how we go the options available so as I was saying before each of the sensors has a voltage and ground rail as well they connect to an external power supply which you can see this blue connector here so you would connect the external power source to that which I'll talk about in a minute now when pulling apart the shield if you need to pull it off the Arduino just be very careful because it is not it is tight and when I pulled it off I actually bent some of the pins you can see right there which I straightened them out fine but just a bit of a heads up just in case now as for that external power supply what I'm going to do is connect up some wires I'm going to connect them direct into that terminal block there now it does say on it that there's a positive and a negative it uses a Phillips head screwdriver to actually undo the screw which clamps down onto the wire so just undo that and then you can put your wires in and I'm connecting this up to my power supply desktop DIY unit that I created in another video. I'm going to link that one there so you can check that out as well. Now I'm connecting this up to the 5 volt power supply. Now it needs to be 5 volts and I'll show you why in a second. 
But once that's all wired up and we've turned it on, you can see the power light comes on on the shield. And you can see up there on the, the volt meter that's 5 volts and there's no current because there's nothing connected up to it. Now, just double checking with a volt meter, uh, I've got 5 volts at the block and then also at the terminal block there. Now, and also connecting to each of those voltage pins, it's 5 volts going through it all. So that's what we want to see. Now one of the reasons why it's important to use 5 volt power supply on this is because the 5 volt rail is also connected into that same connection as you can see here. The shield isn't connected to any other power supply so if you were to run 3.3 or any other voltage you'd be pushing that down through into the Arduino Mega itself and having a voltage variation which is not good so that's why you would want to make sure you don't run uh, any of the other voltages through that rail or through that external power supply because you do not want to damage your Arduino itself all right so that's a quick video on the shield I'll be using for all the sensors hope you liked the video and my explanation of this shield now if you want to watch more videos on this system, go check out the playlist for the Algae CO2 scrubber now. Also, make sure you subscribe to see other videos like this and like this video. It helps out the channel a lot. Now that we know how we're going to connect up all these sensors, I can move on to building the next part of the system. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.